If you've heard about any secondhand game store in Japan, chances are it's Super Potato, not to be confused with A Potato. Their selection of retro games and hardware is pretty much unmatched. Now if you're looking for one to visit, you might think the one in Akihabara is a good choice, since it's built up a reputation as some sort of anime and game haven. But that one isn't all it's cracked up to be. It's small, in a crowded area, and smells like GameStop during a midnight release. In my opinion, the best super potato is in the Dindin town area of Osaka. It's bigger, faster, and stronger too, and generally more pleasant to shop in. Plus, it's guarded by all your favorite characters, looking as totally normal as always. Good. Welcome to the last day of Game Boy talking about Game Boys. Today's super important final game is going to be everyone's favorite game, Kuru Kuru Kururen. I hate saying that, so let's just call it KK, because the full initials are problematic. As you can see, this one cost about 12 bucks and even came with its own box. Remember when looking at the back of a box was the only way to tell if a game would be good or not? Well, the back of this box makes the game look pretty awful and also illegal. Shh. Luckily, now you have me here to tell you with utmost certainty that KK is A-OK. -okay. K, but possibly still illegal. Opening up the box, you'll see that the original manual has been included as well. That's actually pretty common with used games in Japan because they don't put everything in their mouth. Brenda. Aside from the usual manual content, there's a lot of cool artwork in here as well, like these dumb birds. Strangely enough, this game was localized and released in Europe and Australia, but for some reason or another, never made it to America. What is it about birds piloting weird sticks that appeals to Europe, but not America? Well, let's get into the game, I guess. Alright, as I touched on earlier, in KK you play as a bird, trying to rescue your bird family by piloting a cylinder. But it's not just any cylinder, it's a rotating cylinder. I'll give you a minute to take that in. Every stage presents an obstacle course full of winding twists and turns that you have to navigate from start to finish. The catch is that you can't manually control your spin speed or direction, only your movement speed. So the main challenge comes from not running into walls. It's kind of like Operation if it wasn't terrifying. Everything's pretty easy at first, but quickly ramps up in difficulty after a handful of levels. Not only do stages get longer, you also have to worry about changing your spin direction by hitting springs and rescuing your lost siblings. Once you get into the groove though, it's extremely satisfying to weave through each stage like long twirly butter. Bird butter. And getting through the whole course without taking damage puts a little star icon on the stage select screen. That's gotta be worth at least a couple satisfaction points. Plus plus, you can also find cosmetic items throughout each level that can add a little more personality to your character. Like instead of a blue stick, you can be a spiky green stick. It's almost like a whole new game. Aside from the main levels, there isn't a whole lot going on. You can play some shorter challenge levels made for speedrunning, or get three friends together and race using only one game cartridge. I don't even know three people, so I wasn't able to try that one out. Overall though, I'd recommend picking this up if you have the chance. Actually, it was released in America for the first time on the Wii U Virtual Console. So if you have one of those, and $8, your chance is now. And with that, our anime video game journey has come to an end. Now I can finally go back to only posting half a video a month. If you enjoyed these and want to see more, subscribing is appreciated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.